and welcome back to the Checkpoint Reach podcast. This is our top five gaming list, and as ever, I'm joined by my fellow gamers and friends, Sud, Perks, and Mai. How are you doing, guys? Good. Yeah. Should be a good podcast today. That's a very chirpy good. I know. Well, you know, <laughs> this guy times, always it? starts so... with the positivity. He does. It's 360, you know, it's, it's what a great console it was, so, you know. It is. As, I'm looking forward uh, to this. As Sud mentioned, and as the title alludes to, it is the top five Xbox 360 games of all time. Well, our favourite games of all time, anyway, on that console. Uh, before we get into the list, make sure that you subscribe to the channel for more gaming content each week. And, uh, yeah, give us a like and let us know in the comments below your top five games of the uh, Xbox 360 genre. Uh, or era, I should say. Anyway, starting with the list, we're going to start with number five, which is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Now, I, I think this is a game that made mine and Perks' list. Um, a game that I remember fondly, just mainly with school nights, <laughs> getting back from school and just going online and seeing literally everybody on my friends list playing this game. Absolutely, I agree with that. Like you said, it, it made my list too. And it, it was the game that sort of brought the FPS genre to the table for me. And I think for many others as well. Like you referenced there, you checked the friends list. Everybody was playing it around that time. And That's not an exaggeration just... either, is it? <laughs> no, like literally everybody was playing it. No matter how many friends you had on, on that friends list, they were all doing the same thing. Whether it was the single player campaign the story which was great or the the online which really took that game off if you like and, and brought everything to the next level for the fps genre it couldn't have not made the list it was too much of an mvp in in that era mm, it definitely was how about um the other two did you guys i mean i know you guys played this game do you remember it fondly yeah it was a great game wasn't it um like you said Literally, we used to come home from school, all of us. I'd be on at some point, literally play it for like six, seven hours, go to bed, and then go to school again. It was just a great game. It was like the multiplayer was so fun. And to be honest, not even just the multiplayer, the single player. I remember the single player being great. Yeah. It was a great campaign. Like There were some great missions. Um, obviously, you know the famous one when you're in the ghillie suit is obviously one everyone remembers. Um, but even you know Nerve every mission in that game was fun. Nerve wracking. Yeah, it was. It was just, but nothing had been really done like that mm. at that time in a single player mission. Like, it was just fantastic, and you know everything about it. Like, you know, we used to always compete, didn't we? You know, kill to death, the ratios and stuff like that, and people arguing. It was just a great game. It was yeah. just really fun. I definitely wasn't anywhere near the top of that leaderboard. No, me neither. Because the amount of times <laughs> people had to say, "Elden, get off your phone." <laughs> That was a, a common theme when we used to play online, wasn't it, Perks? Some things never change, mate. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that still happens in, in today's gaming. But yeah, I mean, everything about that game, whether it was trying to get through no fighting in the war room on Veteran, which took mm. an age, or yeah, joining was... the Mile High Club again on Veteran, there was there was so much fun to that game. And, and even when we, I'm sure other people did this as well before it became a thing, but hide and seek. In oh, the private yeah. lobbies. And that was so fun. It was so much fun. Got a lot of entertainment out of that game. And, you know, it is rightfully on the list, in my opinion. However, we will now move on to number four, which is Bioshock. Um, I know you guys are massive fans of the Bioshock series. I remember getting it and literally playing it all day to completion in one day. Like, so, like I think it was like eight, ten hours to complete, and I just sat there and played it all at once and played it. It was just... I just couldn't stop playing it. It was such a special game. You know, the atmosphere of the game, the enemies, the, you know, the the dialogue, the NPCs. It, just, it was just an amazing game. Would really you coinly? Exactly. I mean, what a great, you know, that's, you know, one of the most famous quotes in gaming now, isn't it? Mm. You know, uh, I mean. It, Even I know it and I didn't, I, I didn't yeah. complete it. I didn't come close. Obviously, you know, the massive twist in the game as well. One of the best twists in any game, but. It's just fantastic. Just a brilliant game. You know, I don't. And the game, like even now, still looks pretty good. Like it's, it was such a great looking game for its time. And obviously, we got Bioshock Two and Bioshock Infinite, which you know, Bioshock Two not as good. Bioshock Infinite was a great game as well. But the first one for me will always hold a special place. And not only is it, I think, one of the best games in the three. Well, the best game of the three sixty. I think it's probably one of the best games of all time as well. 
it's hard to argue to be honest with you i think i'll always remember the beginning where you sort of dropped into the water mm -hmm. there and there's flames all around you and you're sort of swimming towards that lighthouse and and as you take the was it called the bathosphere down yeah the bathosphere in, into rapture for yeah. the first time and, and you've got this sort of dialogue playing in the background and everything about that was so memorable and and the introduction to the characters whether it was just the just sort of generic splicers or the the big daddy's tenenbaum atlas the characters were so memorable and everything about that game was just so far ahead of its time well, do you know what i also think it did great like collectibles like the audio diaries were actually useful like there's not many games where collect. How many games do we all play through and we go, oh, these boring collectibles that mean nothing? But in that game, the audio, the you know, the audio diaries were so useful to figuring out most of the story and stuff and like backstory. They were brilliant collectibles. Probably they the best. Were really use of collectibles interesting I've seen. to listen to as well. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's a game that you guys remember fondly, and it comes in at number four on our list. However, moving on to number three, and we'll that's uh, Halo Three. Another game that you guys are massive fans of. Yeah, pinnacle of um, first-person shooters, I think. Um, especially in the Halo series. Um, it's definitely the best Halo game. I think a lot of people would agree. Um, a lot of people would obviously choose Halo 2 as well. I think that's more for original Xbox players. I think people who are really into the into the 360, especially at the time, um, Halo 3 was the game. The attach rate for that game was ridiculous. It was something like 70% of people that had bought an Xbox 360 had Halo, which was just absolutely insane numbers for the time. And it was just a fantastic game. It wrapped up the story of Master Chief brilliantly, and the multiplayer was just addictive and fun. And, you know, we all had hours of enjoyment out of that game, just like COD. Yeah, absolutely, and we played that through on on legendary together on day one from sort of start to finish without even a break well um, that's every halo that is every halo but... then you guys used to take the day off school as well to do it well like yeah we got, right. ribbed. we got ribbed for that <laughs> so, I, I don't even know why that's a bad thing why is that a bad thing taking a day off to play halo i think that's badass well, I do too, which is why we did it, but apparently people didn't agree because uh, on Halo 3 in particular, actually, I got into a lot of trouble for that because the teachers actually found out <laughs> and they, they knew I was off school to play Halo 3, which was fine by me, but not so much by them. Who snitched? I think everybody. <laughs> Shout out if you're listening. But yeah, more than one person definitely told the told the teachers and... Hey, if you're going to miss a day of school to, to play video games, then Halo 3 would be a good one to do it, in my opinion. Yeah, what well, a great game it was. On, on the note of Halo 3 and COD 4, I think, and it, it continues in our list as well, um, Xbox 360, for me, for you guys, was a console that made its name on multiplayer gaming. I think for a lot of people, that was their first proper introduction into you know full online gaming. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of these games in the top five are multiplayer focused for us anyway, because they're just so memorable. I mean, you can have those games like Bioshock that is a masterpiece, but it is 10 to 12 hours. Whereas, you know, between us all, the amount of time that we've spent on, you know, COD 4, Modern Warfare 2, Halo 3, you know, um, Left 4 Dead, all these sort of games, like hours and hours and hours and hours of entertainment. I think what's yeah. nice as well, they offered single player campaigns that were pretty decent as you know, too. Well, well back in the day you got both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well Halo Three's campaign especially, I I, mean, I think I think it's the best campaign. I mean some people would disagree with that, but I think Halo Three's got the best campaign in the entire series. Um and it was my first Halo game. I'd never played Halo one or two before, so that's probably plays some part in me ranking it highly as well, but mm -hmm. I have been back to Halo 1 and 2 in the Master Chief Collection, and I still think 3 is the best one, and it defined a generation for a lot of people, I think, on 360. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, I think it would have made a yeah. lot of people's top five lists. If you're talking about a game, the 360 as a console, I think Halo 3 was the game that projected it into the stratosphere and really kick-started it and made it do so well. You know, there were some amazing games in that generation. It was one of the most memorable generations for games ever, especially new IPs. But I think a lot of people bought a 360 on the back of Halo 3 
because obviously you had the fiasco with the PlayStation 3 costing 599 US dollars and, um, you know, just not looking very appealing. And then you saw the Xbox 360, it came out a year earlier. And, you know, I can vouch for this. I've never even went near an Xbox console. The only time I really played original Xbox was at your household. And I didn't have one. Mm-hmm. It never even crossed my mind that I'd be buying a 360. But then I saw you know, these games that were coming out on the 360 and the price compared to the PS3. And it's like, well, yeah, I'll I'll, um, I'll go for that one. And it was a pretty good decision as well, looking back. Um, yeah. However, we'll now move on to our number two on the list. Uh, one that we all agree with here, I think, is uh, Mass Effect 2. I mean, the Mass Effect franchise for me is one of my favourite of all time. And I think the Mass Effect 2 game was the best of the franchise by some distance. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm the same as you, Luke. Absolutely, one incredible trilogy. But you could argue possibly the greatest trilogy in gaming, actually, ever. Maybe yeah, I'd as make a that package. Argument. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I put Mass Effect Two in my list, but I could have easily just said Mass Effect trilogy personally because I love the entire trilogy. I think it's great, but I think Mass Effect Two was the one that we all agree is the best one. Mainly, I think, because of the jump from 1 to 2. Like, it was such a massive jump. Like, Mass Effect 1, don't get me wrong, great game, great story. You know, I like the RPG mechanics, but the shooting left a lot to be desired in that game. And I, I think everyone here would say the macro driving was terrible. Awful. Absolutely awful that. in that game. <laughs> so they did a lot right. It was like, you know, taking the, Mac, the Mako out and stuff like that. But Mass Effect, I mean, you know, it's just the improvement in the shooting i think mainly was it was just a night and day difference night and day difference from aspect one and that made a big difference to the whole game because you know the stories in all three are really good it's just that two was the one that projected mass effect into this wow this is this really is like a truly masterpiece game now yeah when i think back and i've ever tried tried playing them back the first one feels like a slog due to how bad mm. i think the combat is yeah i love the story but then i think the combat's not great but then mass effect 2 is just such a jump like you mentioned and and it's really enjoyable as a result mm. yeah i think for me personally when i think about sequels in gaming quite often say for example insert game here number one comes out and then number two comes out and it, it's not even better than the first one or it's a little bit meh feeling mass effect 2 took everything that was amazing about mass effect one and made it even better it's Mm -hmm. such a rare thing to get from from anything not just games but films as well so to get that feeling when you first sort of jump into that game you know where it's going and you know how good it's going to be and and sort of scores across the board and, and everyone's opinions on it definitely can't be wrong i think one of my favorite things about the game was and it's hard to nail this to to one point in particular but the actual sort of Paragon and, and Renegade choices throughout genuinely meant something. Mm. It wasn't just a dialogue choice that, yeah, okay, it's it's just a different speech segment. Re- and Renegade that's it. Shepherd's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. if Did you ever do a complete Renegade playthrough? It was so fun. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. I loved doing the Renegade playthrough. It's so much... Like, don't get me wrong, doing Paragon playthrough is really good as well. It's interesting to see the difference, but... The Renegade, there's so many hilarious moments in the game with Renegade. I don't know, I, I know this has gone on ton- off on a tangent a little bit, but Mass Effect Andromeda, that's one of the mistakes I think it made when it took away the Paragon Renegade. That was a massive mistake. Because that's what made that series so great, I think. The mm. dialogue choices and things like that. Whereas Andromeda, they did away, didn't they, with Paragon and Renegade? And it was just kind of like, well, nothing matters anymore then. What I say is irrelevant. Yeah. I think what overall made the game fantastic was the how character driven it was and it's why i'm always bitter about mass effect 3 because you know spoiler alert if you haven't played it the ending is absolutely f- dreadful i was gonna swear but <laughs> it, it doesn't even goggle. deserve a swear word it's that bad but yeah, yeah. The, the the strength of mass effect is in those characters because you look at the a- actual overarching story and it's not that memorable in my opinion I, it's it's serviceable. It's a serviceable sci-fi story. But what makes the game so good is those characters. They're characters that you really care about. They're genuinely interesting, and they're so well written. And it's just night and day. Bioware making these sort of games compared to what they're doing now, just releasing utter garbage that no one wants to play. You know their strengths are writing amazing characters, and I think that's what ultimately. You play Mass Effect. That that's what you come away with is you know being so engaged with those characters. Yeah, definitely. And what you know, alluding to the characters is like the uh, final mission as well, when obviously you can lose a lot of those characters. Yeah, exactly. And 
I'm not saying nothing like that hadn't been done before because there are probably examples people could bring up where that has happened before. But it was one of the first games I remember I remember playing where there was massive consequences like that yeah, for characters. And, you in. and loyalty missions, the loyalty missions were really cool as well, weren't they? You know, if you made your characters more loyal, they had more chance to survive and things like that at the end. And that was really cool. And yeah, just Jacob's one Jacob's dad going mental. Yeah, pretty much. Island. <laughs> So uh, there's a lot of cool things, but one uh, point Marty picked up on about Mass Effect Three is, although I agree with him that I think we'd all agree the ending's terrible, but I don't think that should detract from the series as a whole, and even Mass Effect Three because I think even Mass Effect Three was a great game. It just had a terrible ending, yeah. but the series as a whole is just iconic, and I'll always remember it. Yeah, I think we all definitely love that series, and uh, yeah, we hope to see it back one day, better than Andromeda was received anyway. However, You'll moving... probably have your bus passed by that time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. However, moving on to our number one on the list, and that's Gears of War. Now, <laughs> what a game this was, and the amount of hours put into this game by us has to be up there with any game that we've yeah. ever played. This this is the 360 game. It's the game for me. It's my favorite game of all time. Not on 360, just it on any console. And it's so strange because it originally was supposed to be a single player only game, and we all know the single player is fantastic in Gears. You know, the first Gears of War, it was such a a great experience. The visuals were absolutely breathtaking at the time. It was a complete generational leap. You know, it had those survival horror elements engaging with the characters everything you'd want from a single player and the multiplayer in you know cliff blazinski and rod ferguson basically admitted to this the multiplayer was basically a mistake it was an experiment that they did at a comic con before the game was coming out and they realized hey people actually kind of like this and they just sort of shoehorned it into the game and i think the fact that that multiplayer was so simple made it work so well because it was so addicting it there is no multiplayer like the original Gears of War, and I don't think there ever will be again. And I think that's why we were all so hooked. Such an engaging and memorable multiplayer experience. Well, I'd never played any game like that with the cover system and the way, obviously, the the running mechanics at the time. It felt really new and fresh to me anyway. 13-year-old me or however old I was playing it. I mean, I've, it, it's hard to really add much to what Matt's already said. I think it's worth noting that me and Matt actually became friends because of Gears of War 1. And we added each other back in the day when that first launched and we played a few online games together and the rest is history, if you like. But that game, not even just for its time, I mean, that game for me is is absolutely my favourite game of all time. The story stands the test of time, the way that it plays, the online, the soundtrack and the score... Everything about that game from top to bottom is amazing. The characters are amazing, not just the leads, but the support as well. Everything was just as close to perfect as they could have possibly got it. And tens of thousands of online kills later and over 5,000 chainsaw kills for myself in particular <laughs> really just sums that game up. Chainsaw Shout out. perky. Shout out Shout to out. the chainsaw. Shout out, it runs probably out got well. chainsawed by me. But yeah, it was it was everything. And I think we all probably took it for granted at the time. You only really look back over time and, and future sort of online shooter releases and think nothing will ever eclipse that. No, it was special. You're in a game for an hour. When does this happen now? You know, you've got 100 people dropping in Battle Royale or 60 people playing each other on Battlefield and everyone quits every every other minute. Gears, it was 4v4, and that was the 4v4 that you had for that entire duration of the match. And some matches would last an hour and 30 minutes, and no one would quit. Everyone would be engaged in that battle, and and that's what made it so special, because that other team, you started to develop rivalries in the game with certain players, because it was the same four players that you were fighting for, say, 19 rounds. You know, it could be 30-odd rounds, an hour, basically, fighting these people. On game chat as well, you know, there was no party chat back in the day, so you oh, yeah, had to actually course. speak to them if they had a headset. And it just created such a fierce, intense rivalry in the game that I don't think will be, it'll be matched. Yeah, I think uh, I think for me, even though it was in my personal list number two, I have no problems whatsoever with it being number one overall because one amazing game. And 
I think the one thing, quickly thing I can say is that it's it's my it's the greatest multiplayer game that I've ever played, and it will remain the greatest multiplayer game I'll probably ever play in my life because but I just don't think there'll ever be a game like it again. And you know, there's not many games I've got over thirteen thousand rank kills on, but there isn't, and it's the only game I've ever got that many amount of kills in a multiplayer game, and that pretty much says it all. We could all, you know, we all got a ridiculous amount of kills in that game, and. You know, Xbox One now has tracking, doesn't it, for, you know, the amount of time played. And I would love to see the amount of time we play, all play that game. I kind of wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it'd be, we'd all be up there because yeah. it was just such a special game. There's not much more to be said about it. I think one of the the more enjoyable aspects of the game as well, thrown on top, was like Matty mentioned, no party chat. Do you no. just remember in between rounds, everyone trying oh, to get their quips yeah. in, and then there's always someone so who gets cut off. <laughs> yeah, was, that was the greatest thing about it. Just, just <laughs> well, the out. best thing. The it's best great. thing was when you know, because obviously when you died, you were cut off. Um, so you'd have, uh, let's say, you know, us four in a team, and all you'd hear is you know, Sud or whatever shouting, saying, "Oh, they're at the chainsaw." So- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they got so then you know I was done. <laughs> or yeah. it, well, I think the funniest Take ones them. was when you know someone was just talking casually, led like nicely, and then all of a sudden they just die, and it's just like oh, just so out of the blue. It was great. Yeah, the abruptness. But, yeah, the abruptness of death was. Yeah, it made it memorable. Especially if someone least. was like screaming down the mountain, like he's about to get. And yeah, you just die. It's like ah, oh, it's great. So many great moments, and yeah, I think a game deserved, uh, deservingly top in our list. To be honest, um. Now we'll move on to our memorable launch. Oh, memorable launch. What? Memorable launch. Memorable launch. Okay, <laughs> I'll try that one again. We'll move on to our honourable mentions, <laughs> and um, I guess I'll start with this one. And I'm going to go for Grand Theft Auto 4 and the story of Nico Bellic in Liberty City. This was one of my favorite GTAs and it's argu- arguably my favorite story in, a, in the GTA franchise. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, but it's just one that hooked me in. And obviously at that hey, time Elvin, period... Can I interrupt you? You want to go bowling? <laughs> oh, exactly. God, would you piss off, Roman? <laughs> <laughs> go bowling? <laughs> I never want to go oh. bowling with you. <laughs> well, actually, Luke, well, not too unpopular here because I agree with you. I think it is the best story in Grand Theft Auto. So I'm with you there. I don't think it's the greatest Grand Theft Auto game, but I definitely think the story is the mm. greatest. I love that story. Yeah, it's so good. It's like, fantastic. And we used to get Perks' Nico Bellic impressions on a daily well, basis yeah. back then. Man, that was that was good. Yeah, as well. but Matty's already beat me to do it, so no need for follow up. He did Roman. Yeah, that's Roman. Yeah, but they sound the same. <laughs> 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 oh, pretty but, similar. Anyway, yeah, that's my honourable mention. I'm glad Sud agrees with me. We might be in the minority there, but it is a great story. How about you guys? Uh, well, I'll just say mine. I think uh, one that was very close to, I think it was in Marty's list, but probably close to all our lists at some point. Uh, Red Dead Redemption. Um, yeah, I mean that would you know for its time. I mean coming off of GTA, I suppose, because obviously they're very similar games, just set in a you know a different setting, but. That formula of GTA into a Western world just a lot of people might have thought that didn't wouldn't work, but it just works so well. It, you know, you've got GTA, you know, you've got the GTA style story. You know, fantastic, fantastic story in Red Dead Redemption. Um, the gameplay is really fun. You know, I get, we hadn't seen a Western game like that before. It, we'd seen Western games, but most of them were terrible, to be perfectly honest. Before Red Dead Redemption, Mad so, Dog McCree. Mad Dog McCree. There was a game called Gun and stuff like that, but. There was Red Dead Revol- Revolver that they made, but there was nowhere near as good as this one. And, you know, I think everyone remembers John Marston. What a fantastic character. And yeah. will go down as one of the great characters in gaming. So, Shout yeah, out to uh, my mate Duff, who completely ruined the game for me. I was <laughs> yeah. halfway through, so I never completed it, thanks to him. I think it could have been in your <laughs> top five, actually, Luke, if maybe you'd have played it instead of it getting ruined as well. Yeah, I, you know, it definitely could have, because I was enjoying mm. the game. But how about yeah. um, Perks and my, you guys fans of Red Dead Redemption, the uh, first one? Yeah, it was in my list. It's an absolutely brilliant game. Rockstar at their peak. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think it'd be as good as it was, to be honest. I remember seeing sort of trailers for it, and I was like, oh, GTA in the Wild West, I don't think that's going to work. But obviously I was proven wrong. 
brilliant game. And obviously the sequel's fantastic as well. And it's I think I appreciate the last game even more now mm. because of how well Red Dead Redemption 2 ties into the first one. Mm. It sort of gives it a, an extra sort of weight, just adds to that world so much. Yeah, it definitely does. Mm. How about you, I mean, Yeah, you guys have already done the game a, a, a really an honourable service there with what you've already said. But I think one of my favourite things about it was Undead Nightmare, the DLC. Yeah, because DLC for the longest time now, in in the most part, has been pretty naff, um, even for sort of AAA titles. But I think to to some of the DLC that stands out to me as one of the best I've ever played across any game and any platform, that would be it for sure. Well, well that, that's funny you mentioned Dead Nightmare. I actually forgot about that because a lot of people regard that as one of the greatest DLCs of all time, don't they? And rightly so because yeah, you that can definitely game see was, why Under Nightmare was fantastic. It was it absolutely was. brilliant. How about um, how about you then, Perks? What's your honourable mention? There was so many to choose from, but I've gone with Fallout Three, and I remember at the time being really hesitant to to pick that game up, even even to try it because I'd never even really heard of the Fallout series. Sure, I kind of knew what it was, but I never really looked into it. And obviously, Three took the game in, in a completely different sort of development than, than it had ever been in before and, and a new way of, of providing as, as a way into that world. But I remember stepping out of the vault for the first time into the wasteland and just kind of walking around, having a look around, not really following the story or any particular mission or anything like that. And that was me sold. That, mm. that really hooked me on that game. And sort of 80 hours later, I was... And trying to 100% the game in as many different ways possible and still trying to find all the secrets and hidden things. So Fallout 3 was so close to my top five. It only missed out because there were so many other titles, but wonderful game. Yeah, I think um, it was number five on my list. And um, I think for me, the great thing about that game is it's probably the game that I've never, I've never played a game that I've had as much fun just exploring as that game. Like just finding random places, random weird things it's the probably the most fun i've ever had exploring in a game on that game and that's why it was in my top five and you know the story was serviceable as well and stuff like that and it was just just a great game another great 360 game and there's just been so many in the 360 generation yeah it does add to that that weighty list of great games in the uh, in the generation how about you matty what's um your honorable mention um for me it was left for dead they could like I said there could have been so many more i was close to going with the orange box but left mm. for dead um again just continuing that multiplayer theme i got so much enjoyment out of it because of the collaboration with others and how fun it was you know playing with you guys on expert how difficult it was and it was probably the sort the first sort of game where you really needed to use communication in a sort of cooperative way to succeed that i played and obviously that has a has a sort of positive Im- imprint on my mind but yeah great game so many that you could have chosen yeah, Left 4 Dead, fantastic game, wasn't it? Um, and you, you mentioned it before, the, or- the orange box as well. That kind of, I suppose you could even, you can't really put them as well because they're different games, but you kind of can because they're all based off the same thing. So it's like, they, they were all brilliant. You know, you had Portal, didn't you, in the orange box, and you had um, Half-Life, Left 4 Dead. They were all just of that era, and they were all fantastic. That was when Valve were at their peak in terms of game making, and uh, just fantastic, and I was actually just going to bring up, I don't know if you were thinking about it as well, Matt, the time when I, when I betrayed you on Left 4 Dead, that was a, quite an infamous time, wasn't it? And yeah, I didn't want was, to uh... talk about that because I, I, I'd erased <laughs> it from my memory. Yeah. <laughs> because, you, quote unquote, you thought I was a zombie. I, I genuinely did, yeah. Maybe that speaks to the game, maybe, I don't know. But, yeah, I well, mean, I, I, I put in the graft to save the whole team the, at the end of was, every mission in Left 4 Dead. Yeah, you have an extraction, and everyone has to get into the extraction yeah, point. Shot you off the chopper. I saved you from defeat and got you into the helicopter, and then you shot me and left me for dead. I just remember your body just flopping. It's like the sea or whatever it was. It's like, oh, absolutely. Hashtag so scared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was, I do have, um, obviously, the, the 360 is an amazing console, a load of amazing games, but I do have one last honorable mention, and it is to Red Rings of Death. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. the up. towel trick. Hey, the towel <laughs> trick is an honourable mention because that got me through a lot of times. I can't believe that your Xbox 360 is still alive. Mine died five know, times possible. from the Red Rings of Death. I know mine's second hand as well because 
Yeah, I got it on the cheap from game. Wow. And it's still I had going. eight Xbox 360s. Yeah, I think, I, well, yeah, I'd say I had about four or five as well. I'm sure Matt had like 10 or something. So pretty ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. really, how many we went through. Really was. Fun times. It was. It really was. Fun games. That's how good the console, console was, though, doesn't it? The fact that we all had more. so many. Yeah, it was yeah. so good. Well, that's a perfect way to end our list. And um, a generation that we definitely got a lot of fun out of gaming-wise. Uh, if you have any, if you agree with our list or you disagree with our list, let us know in the comments below. Or let us know on our social media. You can follow Checkpoint Reach on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Chat Reach Pod. And give our channel a subscribe for more gaming content each week. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys, and uh, contributing to the list as ever. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks. Pleasure as always. It has. It's been a fun one to talk about. It's probably our favourite list, isn't it? Yeah, I it's think it's, it's my favourite generation. So, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it definitely is. So uh, we'll leave it there and um, keep on gaming, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.